Hi, this is Ian with Sterilizer Autoclave Solutions. Today we are going to be doing the two-year PM kit on a Statum G4 2000. First thing we're going to do is remove our cassette, set that off to the side. You're going to want to have access all the way around this unit. Next thing we're going to do is come back to the back and turn it off with that rocker switch. I'm going to unplug the unit, put that off to the side, and remove the waste tube. To remove the waste tube, you push in on the tube hold that slip ring in place and that tube will pull out. It's really simple. If you cannot just pull it straight out, push in on the tube, hold the ring, and it will slide out. There are seven screws that hold this top cover on. You have two on either side and three on the back. These should be all Phillips head screws. When you get to the back, you have a biofilter. This biofilter is in a small bracket. If you push down on the bracket, that biofilter should pop out. We are actually going to replace this biofilter. It's a part of this PM. So I'm going to set that off to the side. The three screws you want to worry about, this one is actually missing one, but there's one on either side of the compressor and one above the power switch. The Phillips head screws in the middle, you do not need to worry about. Easiest way to remove this cover, if you bring the feet to the edge of the table, you can lift up on the back of this unit. You want to make sure you have room on the side. Once you have room, slide this cover and it will sit on its side. This is connected by two wires. If you, do, if you have room, you do not need to remove this cover completely. Um, there is a power supply board that plugs in as well as a different uh, cable. If you have issues with that, please give us a call. I am not going to be removing this one completely. So what we're doing right now is the check valve. This is the only thing you would have to remove the cover for on a two-year PM. First thing we're going to do is cut off the zip tie and this will slide off. This is a half inch wrench that I am going to use pliers. And this will simply twist right off. The new check valve is a 9 16 And this will thread right on. You want to make sure you don't have anything, any big debris of that red Loctite. If you do, you can clean that off. I'm going to use the 9 16 and tighten this down. It does not need to be cranked down, it needs to just be firm. We're going to take our tube, put it on there, a zip tie, and I'm going to cut the tail on that. To check the solenoid and or clean it, it is right back here. And I'm going to use pliers and pull that nut off. Once that's clear, you can lift up and it should come off. You have your metal C-clamp as well as your solenoid coil. Using locking pliers, I'm going to remove the stem. There is a stem removal tool, but if you use pliers, the locking ones work best. Where we're going to grab is right below the threads. There is a narrower part and then it gets thick again. If you grab in the lower section of here, you can damage the stem. If you damage the stem, you have to replace the entire solenoid. So I'm going to be sure to grab from the thinner part up. And what I'm going to do is just grab on, twist. this whole solenoid stem assembly should come out. So as we see, we are discolored. Inside of the stem, we have a spring as well as the plunger. We're actually going to replace this because if you notice, there is starting to get an indentation on the inside. You can clean these. To clean the stem, I'm going to use a piece of Scotch-Brite that I have cut down to about a half an inch, and about three inches long, 
and simply put that in there using a flathead screwdriver. Just kind of push it in and clean it out. It should be nice and silver on the inside. If there is a copper spacer in there, you do not need the copper spacer. The valve plunger repair kit comes with a new O-ring, a new plunger, and a new spring, as well as that copper spacer. Like I said, we are not going to put that copper spacer back in. Before we install this, I'm going to remove the old O-ring. And you want to make sure you get all the debris out of there. And I'm going to use that same Scotch-Brite pad and clean this up a little bit. Now make sure that stem is nice and clean. If you have a vacuum or suction or a compressor or anything like that, it works best at the end to blow this out. In the shop, that's what we use, but in here I do not, so I'm just going to blow it out. Opening this, I'm going to take my O-ring and just set it inside loosely like that. I have my new plunger and my new spring. The spring will go in the plunger. With our clean solenoid stem, I'm going to push that in and flip it upside down. You should be able to press this up and down and it should move rather freely. To install, I'm going to keep a finger on this and just kind of place it over top and it will fall right into place. When tightening this down, you don't need to go really tight. I'm going to use the same pliers. Grab above the hollow part. Once that's in there, with the wires facing up and the hollow part of that C-channel facing up, slide that together, push that back over the stem, and tighten that back down. The next thing we're going to replace is the compressor filter. The compressor filter is located right here. There is a single Phillips head screw that holds that plate on. I'm going to remove that screw and that plate should pop out. If you have any issues, you can use a small flathead and that will pop out. We're going to set that off to the side, grabbing our SICAN compressor filter. Press that into place, push that plate back over, screw that into place. The last thing we're doing to the unit itself is the biofilter. If you notice on the biofilter, there is an arrow, and also on the bracket, there is an arrow. You line up those arrows, and the tubes will just push on. and I'm going to push down, down on it. And that biofilter will snap into place. At this time, we're going to put the screws back in. I usually start with the back. It helps pull the entire top into place. When screwing the top on and off, you want to make sure that you have the power off. You can plug the unit in before you put the screws in to make sure that the screen is working. And you also want to be careful to not pinch any of your wires as you're putting that back on. We seem to be working on that. And I'm going to put my tube back in. That will just push into place and you should be able to give it a solid pull and it should not pull out. That is all the PM parts on the unit itself and now we're going to do the cassette seal. 
I'm going to set the unit off to the side. Our cassette consists of a top and a bottom. And if we notice, we have some discoloration and we need to clean our cassette. First, we're going to check the top to make sure that there is no rust behind our cassette seal. Using that same small flathead, I'm going to get pick a corner and get right on the back side of that seal, kind of push down. We're trying not to really poke the seal. You should be able to pop a corner out. Once that corner pops out, I'm just going to gently give it a pull. And that entire cassette seal should come right out. We're going to discard that. And we're going to inspect the inside. And if you notice, we do have rust in the corners. So we are going to want to clean this cassette top and bottom. To do that, I am using Simple Green and Barkeeper's Friend and Scotch Bright. So what I'm going to do is just spray a little in here with a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend. I have some scotch Bright pads that I've cut up into smaller sections and I'm just going to kind of make a good paste. We're going to clean this entire lid on the inside. If you notice, it is discolored on the top as well. To get into those grooves, stand it up on edge, kind of fold this so it will get in there. I'm just going to go around the entire These corners can be a little tough. We might have to rinse this and do this two or three times. Once I feel I'm good on that, grab the bottom, do the same thing. You just want to clean up all that discoloration that cuts down on your chance of cross contamination. You want to play, pay close attention to this back corner. This is your venturi. You want to make sure there is nothing underneath. This can cause cycle faults as well as drying issues if, they're, if that venturi is clogged. You do want to clean the outside of the cassette as well. If there's any rust on the outside right here, that can affect your sealing um, of the cassette. What I'm going to do is lubricate this entire seal by dipping my fingers in the provided lubrication and just rubbing it all the way around the seal. Next, what we're going to do, locate those blocks and on the back of the cassette, you'll notice, and we are just going to gently put that in there very loose-like. I always start with the set towards me, and with those blocks, I'm going to just press in on that corner, making sure that the nubs are touching each side of the metal. And we're going to do that on all four corners. We're not pressing in in the middles yet. Once all the nubs are in place, we're going to look at the back. We're going to press in the seal on the back, making sure to line up those square blocks. If it is off, you can take a finger and put it between the two sides of the seal and push in and slide it 
and that cassette seal will slide because of the lubrication. I'm going to do the same to the front. Just press that in, push it around on the sides, do the same, press in. Once we're done, I'm going to take a finger and put a little more lubricant. I'm going to put it right between the two lips of the seal and simply go around pushing in and just kind of fitting all the corners, making sure everything goes nice and snug. We're going to do this all the way around this cassette seal. Just kind of pushing it into place. You want to make sure that the back is still lined up, those square blocks and those holes, as well as all four corners, the nubs. Wipe out the excess lubricant. After running a cycle, you will notice that water will stay on the lid. That is because of the lubricant. You can use stat dry to make that water go away faster. Last thing I'm going to do is what's called the squish test. I'm going to put the top and the bottom together and as I squeeze together you should hear a good squish out of the back of the cassette. If you have any issues with doing your PM kit on your Statum G4 2000 or any of the other units please give us a call 704-966-1650 Option 3 for free tech support. Thank you.